Seymori Mio was born into an arranged marriage, the girl's mother died early, and her father married his first love. The man did not love Mayo, so he married the girl in an arranged marriage without her consent. The girl was in her room packing her things, only an old comb that was her entire dowry. All their things fit into one bag. Mio met a friend of hers, and he asked her why she was wearing traditional clothes. Mio told him that she was getting married to Kudo Kyoko. The guy was surprised why she was marrying that man. The girl explained that she was already 19 years old, and no one asked her to marry except Kudo, and she hoped that she would be happy in marriage. Mio went to an old tree stump, said goodbye to it, that stump was special to the girl, it reminded her of her mother, the young girl knew that she would not have a happy future, she was only waiting to meet her mother in heaven. There were only bad rumors about Mio's future husband Kudo Kiyoko. Many influential families wanted to marry their daughters to him, but for some reason, all the girls ran away from their husbands after a few days. That's why Mayo's family arranged the marriage, her father's new wife and youngest daughter wanted to get rid of the girl and didn't care what happened to her or where she went. Kudo Kiyoko was a member of the most famous family in Japan. He had many different talents. Mio came to the house of her future husband. When they met, the man said that in this house the girl should listen and do only what Kiyoko told her, even if he told her to leave or die, the girl would have to do it without objection. Mio had a dream, she was small and ran to her mother, her mother apologized to her and said something, but what she said to her daughter Mayo did not hear. The girl was preparing food in the morning, which surprised Yuri, the one who looked after Kudo's house. The woman asked the girl to finish cooking while she went to do other things. The woman was very surprised that the bride was doing housework. The young owner saw a bird in his yard, which turned into origami when he looked at it. Yurio and Maya brought breakfast to Kudo's room, and the woman said that Munia had cooked the whole breakfast herself. The owner of the house asked the bride to be the first to taste the food. The girl refused because of the rules of etiquette. She could not eat first. She was taught that the host eats first. Kudo took this as an attempt on his life and left the room without tasting the food. Yurio followed him and scolded the young master for his attitude towards his future wife. The woman stood up for the girl, saying that Maya was not the kind of person who would kill him. She was the first girl in this house who cared and worried about others. Kuda was disturbed by the origami he found in his yard. Something is not right. Hiyoko used his power to stop the fire that came from the supernatural object. Kuda brought the supernatural object that caused the fire to the elders in town. They begin to worry because of the emperor's words he saw in a dream that grotesques will appear in the city. But they can't just appear like that. Someone must have found the crypt, deliberately broken the seal, and released the supernatural. The ministry of the imperial court makes a lot of efforts to catch the grotesques, but they do not understand the motive for releasing them. Kudo Kiyoko was introduced to Soroki Arata, who was the director of one of the largest corporations in the country. The guy did not have any supernatural abilities, but he had good negotiation skills. They needed to work together. At home, Mia was waiting for Kyoko, and she apologized for what she had done that morning and promised not to do it again if he forgave her. The boy looked at the girl. It was not clear that she was from a famous and wealthy family. The girl was wearing a worn kimono, her hands were all cracked, and she was constantly apologizing, as if she was only being ordered. Mia was not like all the young ladies who had previously come to Kudo's engagement. The young master went to take a bath and the girl apologized for not being able to heat the water, but he said that it was okay, only he could heat the water. Kudo heats water with magic. Mia was surprised by what she saw. She had never seen anything like this before. When she started to apologize again, Hiyoko forbade her to apologize, because when you apologize a lot and constantly, words lose their value, so now Mayo is forbidden to apologize. The owner asked the girl to cook him breakfast, saying that if she poisoned him, she would die with him. He also gave Mayo some herbs for the bride to put in the water. Mayo was worried that if Kudo found out that she had no powers, he would kick her out of the house. Her younger sister, who had both parents as gifted, had the ability to see grotesques. The girl tried very hard to make the young master like it. She had to stay in the house, no matter how hard it was. If Kudo threw her out, Mayo had nowhere to go back to, she would not be accepted home. Kudo liked the food, he praised Mio, and the girl began to cry from his words, which surprised the audience he was the first person to praise the girl, before him she had never heard words of praise from anyone. This alarmed Kyoko, he asked Yuri to follow Mio and tell him everything, and the boy wants to study the Samuri family from the outside. For a gifted family connected to the emperor, lineage is very important, which is why the Kudo family wanted to unite with the Samuri family. Mayo's mother had great abilities, but they were not passed on to the girl. Her father began to worry that Mayo's powers would not be revealed, and Kudo would drive the girl out of the house. 
The girl's mother, Sui Sangori, was from a family that had powers of impeccable purity and beauty, a descendant of the Birian family, but her entire family went underground and nothing was known about them. They all have the ability to influence people's hearts. Kudo wondered how Soroki knew about the Birian family and what it meant to influence people's hearts. Soroki explained that influencing people's hearts means causing hallucinations, allowing people to see through walls, manipulating consciousness and memory, and having an effect on the human soul. Kudo had never heard of this ability before. Soroki said that even Kudo himself could not match it. Soroki was surprised that Kudo, who was indifferent to other girls, began to take an interest in his fiancée. When Kudo returned home, he asked how his future wife was spending her time, and Yuri told him that Maya was trying not to leave her room, repairing her kimono, and it seemed to her that she was not sleeping well. Kudo asked her to go for a walk on the weekend because she hadn't left since she moved in with him. Mio tried to refuse because she didn't want to go out so that the landlord wouldn't get into any trouble. The girl was forbidden to leave the house where she used to live, and she did not know anything about what was happening on the streets. Yuria was helping Maya get ready for a walk when she noticed that the girl's wounds on her arms were starting to heal. Maya said it was probably from the herbs Kudo gave her to add to the bath. The woman laughed, saying that Kudo didn't know anything about herbs. Mio had always thought that if she did not have strength, others would not accept her and would not be able to love her, but when she came to Kudo's family, she began to change her mind. Kyoko was fascinated by Mio's appearance. She was very beautiful. The young master took her to a fabric store, and the shop assistant immediately asked who this girl was for the young man. In the store, Mayo saw a kimono similar to the one her mother wore, and Kudo noticed how the girl never took her eyes off that garment. In the cafe where they went, Kudo was followed by other girls, who whispered about the boy's beauty. Kyoko asked Mayo what her mother was like. Mio told him that her mother died when she was two years old, and all she remembered was a red and cherry kimono and long black hair. Kudo said that Mayo was very much like her mother. The girl asked which of her parents the groom resembled. He replied that people said he looked like his mother. But he rarely saw his mother. Kudo called his mother a social butterfly because she was almost never at home, and Yur was raising him and his sister. Mio wanted to spend more time with Kyoko. In the city, the children found an object similar to the one Kudo was putting out at the ministry. Kudo had been friends with the emperor's son since childhood, and when they met, Hyoko told his friend that they had found grotesques in the city and that no one had been hurt. The emperor's son was worried that chaos had broken out and that this would be the last chaos after which his father would die. The emperor ordered Kudo Kyoko to become a shield for enemy spies to protect the people. Mio and Yur went to the city. The girl wanted to thank Kudo for taking her out. Then her little sister saw her, and Kaya was surprised that Maya was still alive. Kaya began to humiliate Mio again, saying that she had no strength and that she was not worthy of Kudo Kyoko. Kudo's bride was trying her best not to cry, so as not to make her sister even happier. Mio began to lose her balance and fall. Soroki picked her up and tried to calm her down, saying that the nightmare would soon disappear. Yura ran up to Mio, and she began to thank him for his help, but Soroki disappeared. Kudo appeared before the Singmori family, he wanted to clarify the relationship between them, because marriage for such families has always been political and built on the interests of the families. Kudo refuses to pay for this marriage. The only condition for the Singmori family to receive a ransom for Mayo is a sincere apology to the girl. Kaya saw Kyoko in the house and fell in love with her sister's fiancé. At night, Kyoko heard Mio in a dream asking for forgiveness from someone and begging them not to close her. The girl dreamed of memories from her childhood, how her stepmother locked her in a dark room after burning her mother's kimono so that there would be no woman's clothes in the house. When Kudo took her hands and told her that the worries in her heart would soon disappear, there was a flash behind him. Mio was thinking about telling Kudo the truth when she had guests over. A woman who used to work in her house came to visit Mayo, she knew the girl's mother. But the woman was fired by her stepmother for always protecting the child. Mio told Kang that she was not strong enough and therefore could not stay in Kudo's house. Kang gave the girl an origami and told her that Kudo had come to get her to bring her to Mio. Mio ran to Kyoko to tell her what she was afraid to say. The girl admitted that she knew nothing, that her parents had only a surname, that she was treated as a servant in her parents' house, that she had no education and could not do anything that rich children could do. Mio admitted that she deliberately hid this from him because she did not want to be kicked out of the house. She left a gift as a token of her gratitude for his concern. Hyoko told Mio that he planned to sign a marriage contract with her. He did not care whether she had power or not. Mio braided her gift into Kyoko's hair. Takahito, the emperor's son, came to see his father. The emperor was gray in color, as if he were being swallowed up by darkness.
Hudo visited people whose bodies were inhabited by grotesques. They looked like zombies with rolled eyes. Kudo and his colleagues discussed how grotesques inhabit people, how they choose the gifted. They didn't know how to get rid of a grotesque without killing a person. Mayo brought Kudo's food to work. Hyoko was very surprised by his bride's action. The girl began to look at the groom differently. She saw how his subordinates treated him. The shop assistant brought Mio a lot of kimonos and accessories so that she could choose what she liked. It was a gift from Kyoko, and the boyfriend also ordered a comb for the bride, which means a marriage proposal. Mio heard someone knocking on the door, went to see who came to them and did not return. Jur heard a strange sound, ran out to the noise and saw that Mayo had disappeared, only her shoes were left outside the house. Kudo was looking for information about Mio's mom. Hyoko felt an unusual strong aura when he was wiping tears from Mayo's sleeping face. Mayo's friend was running to Kudo. Mio had been kidnapped by her stepmother and younger sister. They tied her up and kept her in the room where they had locked her up as a little girl. The stepmother screamed and beat the girl. She hated her mother and the girl as well. Kaya asked Mio to end her marriage with Kudo. A friend of Mayo's told Kudo that his father and Kaya had conspired to kidnap Mayo. The father wanted the blood of the Buren family, and Kaya wanted to marry Kudo. Kudo set fire to the house where Mayo was kept in search for the girl by fighting with the men of the family. Kudo's forces were stronger. The women at that time drowned Mio. When Kudo fought with Mayo's father, the father shouted that what kind of fatherly love can there be for a daughter who has no strength? At that moment, the whole house caught fire. Kaya demanded that her sister tell her that the engagement would be called off, but Mio said that she would be with Kudo until the end, no matter what happened, she would not give up on him. She was his fiancée. A grotesque thought entered the family's mind. Kudo killed him. Hiyoko found Mio and took the bride away. Kaya ran after them, saying that she hadn't done anything to her, she just wanted to understand why Kudo's family agreed to their marriage, because Mio had no abilities. Kaya would be a better match for Kudo, she has the ability to see grotesques. Hyoko shouted at Kaya, ordered her to shut up and said that he didn't care about looks and talents, even if the sky fell, he still wouldn't choose Kaya. The house burned down completely. The Samori family is completely destroyed. The grotesque has moved into one of the employees of the department where Kudo works. Kudo's family moved to the countryside. Soroki came to visit Kudo, and he was surprised to learn that Maya was Kyoko's fiancé. Yur told Kudo that Soroki had once helped Mio on the street, but she hadn't had time to thank him, so she tracked him down and sent him a gift. Soroki asked Mayo what the scar on her face was, and she said it was just a nice scar. Soroki told Kudo that Mayo could be even more hurt, and wondered if Kyoko had done anything to stop her from having nightmares. Hyoko became suspicious. That it was all because of Soroki, to which the man replied that if Kudo wanted it to end, the captain just needed to bring Mio to him. Soroki showed Kudo an origami on his palm that turned into a bird and flew away. Soroki himself disappeared, crumbling like sand. Kudo remembered that he had found the same origami in his backyard and ran to the office. Kudo's subordinate, who had been possessed by the grotesque, came to his office with a report, but the captain was busy with something else and did not even look at the boy. Kudo found Surudi Suni among the names on the list of women. The captain ran home and the girl had nightmares again. Kudo woke Mio up, hugged her and asked her not to worry. The girl cried and told him about her dreams. There was no one around her, just her in the muddy water. Kudo hugged the girl and assured her that everything was fine. Kudo brought Mio to Soroki. Hiyoko asked if he was looking at a real person. Soroki led the couple to a room with a large table and many chairs. People appeared in front of them. They were the elders of the Boren clan. The main one came up to the girl and said that she really looked a lot like Sumi. It was Mayo's grandfather, Sumi's father. Soroji is a cover name, their real name is Baran. Kudo was only interested in who was sending Mio the nightmares she was having in her dreams. As it turned out, it was all because of the blood that flows in her. The girl has a very powerful force that she cannot cope with without the help of her family. To end the nightmares, Mayo must stay with her family. Kudo will not be able to help her. Kudo's decision was very difficult, but he ordered his bride to leave his house. Kudo bowed in front of Mayo's grandfather. Mio stayed at her brother's house. Soroki asked Mio to marry him. Mio wanted to know why her mother married a man from the second clan if it was dangerous. Sumi married only to save the company, which could have gone bankrupt without the money her family received for the girl's ransom. Grotesques entered the imperial court. The emperor had died. In the imperial court, the administration fought with the grotesques, and the officials tried to imprison them. The gifted need to use their power to protect the city from the grotesques, so they build a protective wall. During the battle, Kudo felt something, something that made him pause and look around. 
Mio heard her brother and grandfather talking, they were discussing that the grotesques were coming to the center and everyone in the special department should be killed. After that, Mio's powers came out, she pushed Soroki away from her, who wanted to stop her. And Mio has the gift of dreaming, penetrating other people's dreams and dreams, penetrating people's dreams. Regardless of the gift of the gifted person, the girl can change their thoughts in a dream. Their gift is not for fighting grotesques, they need to be where the situation is critical in order to stop the gift of gifted people. In simple words, they neutralize the gift of others. Previously, her power only manifested itself in the form of nightmares. Mio wanted to go to her husband to help him, but she was forbidden to leave her family home. The emperor, knowing about Kudo's powers and Mio's, forbade them to be together. The emperor was afraid that the prophecy would be weaker than the powers of the dream. The emperor was also afraid that if Kudo and Mio joined forces, it would be one of the greatest threats to the ruler. For this reason, they want to take Kudo under guard. For Kudo, the battle with his friends that possessed grotesques was hard. It is impossible to kill a grotesque in a human body. They could only kill the possessed or tie them up and imprison them. Kudo had to kill a friend who was possessed by a grotesque. The emperor died. He was poisoned by a trusted doctor. It was he who opened the crypt with the grotesques. Mayo's brother does not let his sister go. He is obliged to protect her. It is his mission to keep her safe. He did not want to let the girl go. She cannot control her power. The guy was afraid that she would die from her power. Mayo replied that she would gladly die if she did not get help from her brother. Mio ran to the man. She remembered her mother's words. She said that her daughter would find happiness. She just had to wait until she grew up. Mio ran to Kudo, and when she fell, she broke the calm she had given him as an engagement present. Kudo saw his friend, who had fought with him to the last against the possessed, approaching the window to jump. He runs to stop him, but sees that the guy has also become possessed. They start fighting and Mio hears Kudo screams and falls. Mio begins to feel her power and realizes how to use it. The girl penetrates the thoughts of her lover and orders him to kill the grotesque. Mio is with her mother, crying and saying that she still cannot accept her side. The mother hugs her daughter and offers to meet later. The woman said goodbye to her daughter and brought her back to consciousness. Mayo freed her powers, which helped to defeat the grotesques. All those possessed by the grotesques regained consciousness. Kudo saw Mayo, ran to the girl, hugged her and heard her say that she wanted to stay with him, wanted to be close to him. Mayo's mother knew that her daughter had a very strong power, and she specially sealed the gift so that no one could harm her. Mio and Kudo returned home, the girl said that she had broken the comb that her fiancé had given her, the guy wanted to buy another one, but Mayo refused to accept a new one, it was important to her, it was important to her what the accessory meant. The girl agreed. 